What is the biggest load of bullshit you have ever been told? I won't get mad if you tell the truth. Mom. Holy shit does this bring back memories. I was coming late from school because I stopped at the arcade with my friends. But I wasn't allowed to go there, because I spent 100 bucks one day there and they said I got an addiction. My mother WWS shopping and saw me there but pretended not to know just so she could see if I lied. When I returned. She asked me why I was late and I told her that we had an extra class to make up for our teacher being sick. She then called me out on the lie and took off her sandal. Coming in fast towards me. In the third of a second it took her to swing it at me. I ducked and grabbed her bare foot. I threw her on the ground and took off her other sandal. And in a swift move shoved them both down her throat. I then climbed up inside her arsehole and what Jay saw turned my stomach. It was my little brother that was supposedly kidnapped. She actually put him up her ass so he could give her his cells. I let out a roar and her body exploded. And the two sandals flew right into the ceiling. Where they remain to this day. My sister-in-law was supposed to bring her kids and come for Christmas dinner. I wasn't planning on making a huge meal until my mother-in-law asked if they could all come. So I dropped a shitload of money at the store and spent all day cooking. When my husband's sister is late. His mom calls her. She claimed it was snowing with freezing rain and didn't want to drive in the bad weather. We live an hour away. It was unusually warm for December. About 56. I check the weather app. Yep. It was 56 there. 2. His mom said well. Sometimes the app is wrong so I called my brother. Who lives in the same city as the sister. Yep. It was 56 and sunny. A beautiful day. If you're going to lie to me. At least make it believable. Diarrhea. The flu. Car trouble. Etc. Nope. She lied about the weather. I was taking a hardcore physical education class and after our 3 mile jog break we went to get water. My friend didn't bring water and it was almost 100 f that morning so I offered him water from my jug and he told me no thanks I don't drink water. You also shouldn't drink so much water otherwise your body gets used to it and you get more thirsty. Think about it. Double quote. I'm not a scientist but I think his acne scarred face meant he's been on a water diet for a while. I have the perfect story for this. I once worked with this guy who had the driest. Darkest sense of humor ever. And he was perfect at delivering everything with a straight face. He was also really quick witted. And could come back at you with a well thought out quip within seconds. Altogether. This made him the king of bullshitting. Once. We were talking about Bob Ross. We're both in a creative industry. And we're chatting about how we both got into art. Out of the blue. He threw in. It's a real shame what happened to him. Apostrophe. Not knowing what exactly happened to Bob Ross. I asked him to continue. He looked me dead in the eyes. And said. Completely straight faced. You didn't hear. He died in a shootout with the police. He was holding three prostitutes prisoner in his basement. I totally believed him for about 5 seconds. It was only the absurdity of his story that made me question it, he never cracked up. There's a local drive-in where a lot of old guys with classic cars meet up on the weekends. I was up there one Saturday with my car club and one huge guy, at least 7 feet tall. 350 LB plus was there with his plain jean newish Ford F-150. It couldn't have been more than 3-4 years old. He butts into a conversation and tells a good 6-7 of us that his F-150 has a twin turbo Raptor V12 and it has 1200 HP. Later it changed to a twin Raptor motor setup with 2000 HP. He even had the hood on his truck open so we could verify his bullshit. Bone stock V8 under the hood. It wasn't a Raptor. It wasn't dual engine. It wasn't twin turbo and it damn sure didn't have anywhere near 600 HP let alone double that. He supposedly works as a bodyguard for celebs and makes $150. 000, 000 per gig and averages 2 gigs a month. At that point I had to literally walk away while trying to stifle laughter. I wanted to call him out on his BS but I didn't feel like having to fight Shrek or start a bunch of drama so I'll let it go. 
At my old job we had a security system installed. I was the manager. I watched it get installed. I asked the security guy if it was possible to see when other employees armed disarmed the alarm to verify it on their time cards to see if they were coming in late. He actually laughed at me and said there is no way to do that unless he sits in the parking lot in his car and watches for me. I'm sure some security systems are capable of this. But ours wasn't. I relay this info to my boss. As a sort of hey I had a great idea but it's not possible type thing. Dot. About a month later my boss tries to convince me that he could check the security system and see when people were coming in late. I remind him that I was there when the system was installed and I also remind him that it was my idea and it wasn't possible. He doubles down and tries to tell me he talked to the security guy. And the security guy sends him an email each week of arm disarm times for the alarm. I mentioned this to the security guy next time I saw him and he told me my boss was full of shit. That my crazy ex was pregnant. Been with her for about 2 months. She started becoming very suspicious of me and I found out she was going through my phone, probably while I was asleep, because I didn't sort have a passcode on it. She would read my conversations and finally when she thought she had some dirt on me she hit me with. Swell ho sauce Rebecca and why are you planning to meet with her? Sai responded. Sai fi how sod read more of the conversation how sod see that I was planning on having lunch with her and her fiancé. If I was cheating on you don sod you think a sod at least have a passcode on my phone? But you know what? We should slow down. S. Fast forward a week and she shows me her sonogram. I know it wasn't sod hers. But all of a sudden she sos pregnant. I decide to go along with it so I change my tone and become super supportive and involved. Told her I wanted to go with her to the first appointment. She told me I didn't sod have to go and her mom would go with her. Waited it out and another week or so passes by and she's lost the baby. S. I tell her she needs to get the fuck out of here and this I'm done. Makes for an interesting story. This one is kinda specific. For context. There are two types of lawyer in the UK. Solicitors, who build the case, and barristers, who present the case in court. I decided to go down the solicitor route. Which requires you to do the legal practice course, LPC, and then two years on a training contract with a law firm. Since I did a non-law degree, I had to take the conversion course first. Now onto the bullshit. The entire two years I was at law school. The careers department and the tutors only drummed one message into our heads. That the only way to have a successful career as a lawyer was to get a training contract with a law firm and qualify. That was all they talked about. I graduate. And the truth finally becomes clear. First. I learned that there are so few training contracts available that getting one is like winning the lottery. And the application process is a fucking rat race. Second thing I learn. This time through my successful friends. Is that if you do win the lottery. Working a training contract is such a thankless job. With long hours. Way too much work and no fucking work life balance. But the third and most crucial thing I learned. Law firms are the least efficient way to make a successful career in law. Is I've been doing temp and contract work for a year now. And my career growth rate is way higher than I expected. Plus. I have a fantastic work life balance. My salary is decent for someone a year out of college. And if I'm working with some pretty amazing companies. If so I've met some amazing people who like me started in law but realized what a waste it was. What is some getting it is. Don't so believe all the shit your careers department tells you about your career path. The world works very differently. And not necessarily for the worse. The religious unwrapped candy routine. They took a piece of candy. Unwrapped. And instructed us to pass it around the room while they went on a monologue about how many germs are on our hands. When the monologue was over. Whoever had it in their hand was invited to eat the piece of candy. Obviously they wouldn't. And that piece of candy was compared to women's bodies. If it's been touched. Nobody would want it. Several of the girls in that room had been sexually abused and at that moment felt incapable of being loved. The adults knew what they'd been through. Yet still decided to do this presentation. We were at most 10 years old. 
I got into an argument with a buddy of mine who told me, about 9 years ago now, comma that we only had 8 years of fossil fuels left. Say what? If we literally had 8 years of fossil fuels left not only would gas be more than the $2 it was at the time, but we would be in fucking crisis mode. We stopped hanging out. Before I moved away a while ago. For many reasons but we definitely drifted apart because he wouldn't back down from dumb dumb bullshit like this. Dude always had to be right. A strange old guy who was a neighbor of my parents once told us a tale about a man he knew who was diagnosed with a terminal brain tumor. He was so distraught he decided to kill himself. He took his gun. Pressed it against his head and bam. Pulled the trigger. Well and Satya know it. Not only did he survive. But he blew the tumor out of his head and was cured. The intent is to provide players with a sense of pride and accomplishment for unlocking different heroes. As for cost. We selected initial values based upon data from the open beta and other adjustments made to milestone rewards before launch. Among other things. We're looking at average per player credit earn rates on a daily basis. And we'll be making constant adjustments to ensure that players have challenges that are compelling. Rewarding. And of course attainable via gameplay. We appreciate the candid feedback. And the passion the community has put forth around the current topics here on Reddit. Our forums and across numerous social media outlets. Our team will continue to make changes and monitor community feedback and update everyone as soon and as often as we can. Double quote. Meet a guy through Yahoo Personals way back when it was a thing. Talked for a few weeks. Exchanged pictures. Agreed on a date. He no showed. I hopped online the next day to basically say WTF. Dot. He then proceeded to make up the most batshit insane sorry I've ever heard in my life. At the time, he claimed, he was working for a large tobacco company and, claimed, to have a fairly senior role. He told me that when he was leaving the office for our day the entire office was raided by the FBI for money embezzlement. They handcuffed everyone and he was brought to jail and not allowed any calls. Claimed his father, who also worked for the company, had been stealing funds and he was wrapped up in it. I asked him where he was right now. And he claimed he was bailed out. But under house arrest and had FBI agents parked outside his house watching his every move. What the fuck? Man. If you thought I was too ugly when you saw me sitting there waiting for you to show. You could have just ghosted me. Don't insult my intelligence too. Audi dealer with me looking at a CPO or 6. Few years old. Arrest me red color. Chrome rims. Red and black leather race seats. Upgraded engine. Comma this one's a year older but doesn't have a ton of miles on it. It was bought here and obviously sold back here when she returned to buy her next vehicle. She was the sweetest old lady who only drove it to the grocery store and back. And probably to church. Even if that's true. It's such a cliche you can't actually tell people that. Nope. You'll receive your full deposit back when you move out if there aren't any damages. Yeah. Here's how my last move out went. Small buff on the wall from my bike tire hitting it. I had done that before and wiped the mark off the wall with my finger. Landlord said the wall needed repainting. $200 charge. Room was carpet. The door leading outside didn't have weather stripping on it. Left a gap under the door where dirt would gather. Then drag along the carpet when I'd open the door. Told the landlord immediately. She insisted it counted as wear and tear. Upon move out. That curved line of dirt on the carpet means the entire floor of carpet needs to be ripped out. $200 charge. She also tried to claim I never paid my second month of rent. But the story made no sense. And I had receipts. Close bracket. I went to a Church of England first and middle school. One time in morning assembly we were told that everyone in the world used to be black. And that God put a pool on top of a mountain that if you bathed in it would turn your skin white. Everyone rushed to the pool and used it up. The people who were late getting there found only enough left to wet the soles of their feet and palms of their hands. Which is why some people are still black and have lighter skin in those places. Proper bullshits told to impressionable kids. 
I had a patient with an obvious knife wound to his abdomen that actually pierced his liver, just so. But that a significant depth, tell me he fell on a knife shaped rock mind you oh you. This was without promoting and before anyone suggested to him the wound was knife shaped 5 minutes later another stabbing victim rolls in and tells me he fell on a beer bottle which broke. Both of them. Of course have their various buddies with them who. Upon seeing each other. Begin to fight. Meanwhile. Everyone involved is denying having any previous interaction with one another. What a coincidence. I also routinely see people who are about to go to jail morph from being perfectly healthy to having extensive lists of spontaneously developed medical problems. The most common are chest pain and seizures but there is some kind of seizure epidemic amongst criminals in my area that presents with sudden onset exaggerated limb flailing and acute loss of control of the volume of one's voice while repeating I'm having a seizure. I can't go to jail honestly. Public health officials should be looking into this crisis. We call it incarceritis and it's cured by the threat of a foley cath shoved up the dick hole, the medical term. Of course. My drug addicted. Piece of shit. Consistently unemployed. Divorced loser of a big cousin got a new job at the airport nearby. I believe he was a part time baggage handler or something that didn't sort require any crazy qualifications. He told me that they were allowing him to fly the helicopter that was on site just to take it for a spin. Son. The state wants to give you your driver's license back. And you haven't sort been able to pass a drug test since you were 9 years old. The state airport is not giving you a helicopter to fly. That was the day I realized I think he actually believes his own bullshit. My ex-husband told me the baby I was pregnant with cold and sort be his. Why? Because his brother got tested for HIV and he used his brother a soft razor. Therefore also got tested. According to him. When they tested him. They told him he had only a small chance of ever having kids. He was my only partner ever. So I had no doubt. Comma I should have said. Siao saw rights and just let him go. He was a worthless father anyway. My parents put down my first dog without me being there. I picked out a black lab puppy when I was 5 and named her Trini. After the yellow ranger of all things. But I loved the power rangers and she was the girl so it sounded better than Kimberly lol. When she was about 7 she started breathing weird and we could never figure out why that was. It was when she was 10 was when a vet told us she had throat cancer. Not too long after she reached the point to where we needed to put her down. I was very sad about losing her. And wanted to be there when they did it. But they told both me and my younger brother that they didn't sort want us to be there for it. I was 16 at the time so I felt I would be fine but my brother, being 10, probably will and sort be okay going in. The day it happened. I was at school and in a very down mood. And when I got home my parents and brother were there. They had taken him with them to put her down. And didn't sort take me. To see the dog I grew up with for one last time. I never understood why they did that. I never really could get a true reason for it either. I miss you Trini. You were a great dog. I was 22. Single lonely mom of one. Met someone who was charismatic. Older. 17 years older. Comma seemingly had his shit together. Started dating. He said he was on parole. Because he was burning trash on a high wind day. It got out of control and burned down his neighbor's barn killing award winning livestock. Figured. A it's an accident. Those happen. Continued dating. Got pregnant. Got engaged. Had a miscarriage. Got married. Timeline. June. September. Year later. Get pregnant again. His 18 year daughter moves in with his. And mentioned something about the dude that died in the fire. Stormed to his job. And demanded an explanation. He says he was looking for money for meth. Broke into an eye doctor. And lit it on fire to cover his tracks. The eye doctor died during the trial died to the stress. Stayed with him. Had our daughter. Left him when she was 6 months old after 2 years of lies. Cheating and abuse. When my daughter was 4. He ended up in prison again. And again. Now currently being tried for yet another criminal case. Other sure what. And domestic violence and harassment cases. He hasn't seen her in 5 years. 
We've been separated 9. I'm finally not too scared and I'm working on the divorce with the help of an attorney so I can marry the man I've been with since 2013. The owner of the business I worked for said. We are a small business. We just can't afford to offer health insurance of any type to our employees. Double quote. Yeah I was the bookkeeper but his wife also had access to QuickBooks. She cut him over $200k in bonuses in less than 3 months. Then tried to hide it by fudging some check numbers. If you don't want to offer insurance. Or even pay for a portion of the employee's insurance. Then I guess don't. But don't try to say you can't afford it then cut yourself bonus checks that add up to over twice what houses go for in the area. Icing on the cake was the constant facade they they were. Good. Caring Christians. Yup. Sure you are. We can't afford staff because of the budget. Meanwhile. My confused patients end up with no sitter to keep them safe so we end up paying extra for the treatment after the eventual fall and get blamed for not being in two places at once. Our patient satisfaction scores down. Our evaluations end up being shit. And we all end up looking for other places to work eventually which begins the cycle anew with a new grad hire to take the blame. I'm a nurse. I made a severe and continuous lapse in my judgment. And I don't so expect to be forgiven. Is I'm simply here to apologize. What we came across that day in the woods was obviously unplanned. The reactions you saw on tape were raw. They were unfiltered. None of us knew how to react or how to feel. I should have never posted the video. I should have put the cameras down and stopped recording what we were going through. There's a lot of things I should have done differently but I didn't. And for that. From the bottom of my heart. I am sorry. I want to apologize to the internet. I want to apologize to anyone who has seen the video. I want to apologize to anyone who has been affected or touched by mental illness. Or depression. Or suicide. But most importantly I want to apologize to the victim and his family. For my fans who are defending my actions. Please don't. I don't so deserve to be defended. The goal with my content is always to entertain. To push the boundaries. To be all inclusive. In the world I live in. I share almost everything I do. The intent is never to be heartless. Cruel. Or malicious. Like I said I made a huge mistake. I don't so expect to be forgiven. Is I'm just here to apologize. I'm ashamed of myself. Is I'm disappointed in myself. And I promise to be better. I will be better. Thank you. I'm pretty late but this haunting rose to the top of my mind from second grade. I was already sad that week because my mom wouldn't sign the petition skip to play football. I'm gracious now. But at the time it felt like I was literally being robbed. I didn't even want to play football. I just mentioned it and was told no. And that really stuck with me. Being told no before I even actually asked. Anyway. Later that week a guest speaker came in to talk to us about nutrition. And after a 30 minute spiel over the food pyramid. He asked us what a healthy choice of drink would be. I raised my hand immediately and said water. His reply. Well kinda. Not really what I was looking for. I then heard some other kid get praised for suggesting apple juice. I'm still mad to this day a grown man told me water was not his opinion of an ideal beverage. Yeah I know those fire alarm strobe lights. Well those are supposed to blink at the exact same time if you can see more than two of them at the same time. Seizures. Well we were finishing a job. During the testing and I notice the strobes at the far end are slightly out of sync. Like not a lot but just barely, it would get worse the longer it went on but to an epileptic it could maybe trigger an episode. In how the person who was in charge of the job is trying to tell me that the strobes are synced and that it was because they are further away so the light had to travel further. It was 400 feet maximum. That was possibly the biggest load of bullshit I have ever heard. Just a week ago a man riding his bike stopped to ask me if there was another fire in our area. We live in California and even though one fire was dying down another could have started so I told him I'm not sure but I wouldn't be surprised. He then tells me that the fires are caused intentionally. He told me that the government was using invisible lasers shot from satellites in space to start the fires. 
I didn't feel like arguing so I just nodded my head in agreement. Saddam Hussein has weapons of mass destruction so let's sauce blast a trillion dollars and send a bunch of fucking kids to jerk their dicks around a sandy shithole and have a fucking power vacuum so extremists can take over then the military industrial complex can charge a premium to clean up the mess they were instrumental in creating. My father was kind of a funny guy. The whole family lived together till I was 8. So in that time he had a lot of influence on me. He always told us things like oh I forgot the money at home. We have to sneak out of the restaurant and he actually made us sneaking out. Then he paid and went out as well without me and my sisters knowing. The problem is I always believed him and his bullshit got bigger and bigger. He told me once that his unknown band composed the original Sims theme and someone heard that and just stole it. He also told me that my grandma was a swimming coach of the Olympic swimmers in Germany but she was just a regular swimming coach for school kids. Those things I found out at the age of 20 something. I often wonder which lies are still in my mind. Absolutely not logical but I still believe them because now I can't remember who told me this bullshit. I had a substitute teacher in middle school who was famous for telling. Alternative facts. I'll call him Roy. At the beginning of class, he would write a bunch of words on the whiteboard and have people pick random ones. He'd continue to tell the most obviously false stories I'd ever heard. Roy was 55 plus YO, 5 feet 8 inches, and 200 or more LBS. He told us that he subbed for a gym teacher and ran a sub 5 minute mile with the students. Roy's heart was 3 times the average size which caused him to age slowly. When he was 20 he looked like a 12 year old which was his reason for never marrying. In high school. He was the only guy who didn't bully some nerdy kid who grew to be the creator of Xbox and offered Roy millions of dollars. Which he humbly refused. During a road trip. Roy was driving his Lamborghini when he hit black ice. Did a full backflip. Landed perfectly on four wheels. And kept driving. In the 60s. Roy protested at a controversial state election. The other protesters were so impressed with him that the people elected him as a candidate for governor. Which he would have won had he not respectfully withdrawn his name from consideration. And I remember being the only kid who thought this guy was crazy. My science teacher told us that the reason we weren't not going to the moon anymore, this was in early 1984 was that in 1975 the US and USSR fought a battle on the surface of the moon and the Ruskies won. They were up there now plotting to conquer space and dominate the earth below. MR. Logan, you are a fucking moron. Never let a gym teacher teach a science class. Of course. Being that I went to hardcore Christian school. Science wasn't sought exactly held in high esteem anyway. So what did it matter? I'm probably too late but early on in the gluten free phase like mid 2000s. I asked my asshole older brother what even is gluten. He straight up told me crushed up baby animal bones. My gullible naive ass truly believed him. He said that was how they made flour. You see a simple google would have told me otherwise. I loved baking and I tried so hard not to bake delicious treats. But my sweet tooth won and I would cry a little tears every time I had to pull out my bag of flour and bake something. Eventually. I just got over a cause baked goods are worth it. But I still felt guilty. Believed this all the way into my 20s. I used to live in a town that had two libraries. One nice one. And one that attracted a lot of creepy people. On one of the rare occasions I did go to the second one. I overheard two men discussing our planet's future. Apparently. The US government has built vast underground cities for all the world leaders and billionaires. And the chemtrails left by airplanes are actually highly flammable and they are using them to put all of this flammable gas in our atmosphere. And when the time is right. They are going to set the air on fire and the planet's whole atmosphere will burn completely away. And everyone on the planet's surface will die. Leaving only the world leaders billionaires in the airtight underground cities. Because. Um. Why not? I guess.